And now I'd like to welcome Jonathan Stern from McGill University. Hi, everybody. Thanks to the host. Uh, thanks to Elena Roslagova Concordia, my collaborator on this project. Um, I'm going to talk about a small industry uh, with a big impact on the sound of uh, media, the people here, uh, and that is audio mastering. So audio mastering used to mean literally making the master record that you could then stamp other records from. So it began as record come cutting. But today you can think of it as something akin to typesetting. Many of you uh, have published, right? So it's the moment where the manuscript begins to look like the book. Um, and so the best way I can illustrate this is actually with the difference between an unmastered and a mastered audio track. So here's a little uh, audio sample for you. Okay, that's unmastered. Here's mastered. Bigger, deeper, louder, wider, in short, finished. Um, so for individual recordings, mastering is basically the process that makes them sound finished. Um, for multiple recordings, it is the process that makes them conform to a single standard. And this is important for film, for gaming, for television, for music. Um, so I've been looking at Lander, a company that um, standardizes and uh, applies machine learning to the mastering process, and they're pretty successful. I wouldn't say it's perfect, but I would say that it works uh, pretty well. Uh, and the reason for this is fairly interesting, and that has to do with the structure of the mastering industry. Audio mastering is highly standardized. It is, in the parlance of science and technology studies, heavily black boxed, which is to say most people who use it don't really understand how it's done or how it works. Um, and the industry itself is uh, heavily uh, stratified, so you have a few international experts. You have specialists within sub-industries like gaming or film or television or music, you have local specialists, and finally, you have people who sort of can't afford professionals and do it themselves. So effectively, what Lander has done, and here's a picture of their web interface, is leveraged this black boxing, right? So there are very few, um, very few options here. You can basically, uh, you can low, medium, or high master, and you can compare your master and your original recording, and that's about it. Um, and this actually isn't that different from the experience of most artists who have their work mastered, which is to say they send it off, the mastering engineer does stuff, sends it back to them, and they might say, can you change these one or two things? So Lander uh, is a new company. They're, uh, I don't actually know if they're making money yet, but they are um, making a big splash in the audio mastering field. Um, and it's important to several different um, constituencies and populations. The first is, and this is sort of the happy story of uh, machine learning, is through automation they've made it much cheaper and so many people that don't have access or didn't have access to audio mastering now do. So for instance one big uh, community that uses a lot of Lander's um, uh, services is independent hip-hop producers. So in a way this is an interesting converse um, of what Joy and Simone were talking about uh, before in terms, of, uh, in terms of access and presence in um, uh, machine learning based media. Um, but there's also the case that another group that's very interested in, in services like this are um, video game uh, industry and um, Hollywood, uh, uh, Hollywood studios where for a game or a film you're talking about hundreds of different audio files that all need to be mastered quickly and efficiently. And so um, this is a place where um, potentially machine learning could replace uh, specialists. And the last place where I really see this having an impact is not at the top of the industry, but the local independent mastering engineers who are often the very people training uh, these algorithms uh, who are employed by small labels whose margins themselves, record labels whose uh, own margins uh, have gotten smaller and smaller and are looking for ways to cut costs. In terms of other implications, 
Um, this is pretty standard stuff. But the thing I would point out is that more and more machine learning is creeping into these areas that shape the sound, the look, the feel, you could say the aesthetics of media. And with labor then comes a sort of uh, um, not, just pe not just people working for um, make, uh, not just people working to make media sound, feel, and look like they do, um, but the decisions behind those things are increasingly being automated and being transformed. Thank you.